Hello and welcome to this week's edition of Park Life on the Road as we look ahead to City's game at South End on Saturday. Coming up on today's show, we talk to Matt Taylor and Lewis Page about the game. But first, let's take a look back at City's last league game as we beat Cambridge United here at the park. Cross is blocked. Football this from Cambridge United and it's a brilliant save from Lewis Ward. Corners men on top. Set it towards goal and tipped over. And Cambridge United springing forward again. Here's Paul Mullin, and it's saved again from Lewis Ward. Williams. It's been all Cambridge. Williams, a surging run into the area. And now, was he upended there by Harrison Duck? Referee points to the spot and taking responsibility. It's Jay, it's swept home into the bottom corner, and Exeter have the lead that they barely deserve. The right hand side it never got to it. To Exeter have given the ball away again. Cambridge looking for the equaliser, and it was Paul Mullin again. Cambridge have had plenty of the play, but uh, themselves in trouble here. And they've pickpocketed them here. It's Joel Randall, and it's 2 0 to Exeter City. And Cambridge United contributing very much to their own downfall. They have gifted Exeter a second goal. Candy dispossessed, it's a good finish, he's second of the fire here and they've just given the ball away. Chance for Exeter to stretch their lead with Matt Jay. Mitov got down well, needs to get rid of this. He's just giving it away, Williams to Randall. He set up perfectly, there's Bowman and over the bar. It's coming to an end. And there is the full-time whistle at St James's Park. It is Cambridge's first defeat of the season. It was in this goal behind me where both of City's goals went in against Cambridge, but we were also amongst the goals on Tuesday night in a thrilling 4-3 win at Swindon as a much-changed side took on the Robins in the EFL Trophy. Here are the goals from that one. Deep ball to the back of the penalty area towards Sweeney. Well, it comes out here for a fine effort and a fine goal from Harry Kite. Only four minutes in, fabulous. Fisher, and that's surely a penalty. Sparks Flatten with just six minutes gone. It is two. The academy boys showing what they can do tonight. It's wide though to get back into this game. Nice delivery into the area, and he's got his goal. Tyler Smith pokes into the far corner. Delivery into the front post. That's Angana meets it. Powerful header into the corner. That didn't last long, did it, Pat? comes the corner, it's not dealt with by the defence, Atangana in there and so too is Hartridge, sends it forwards, there's a shot but it's palmed straight into the path of Smith, Off the ball into the area, might drop here for Palmer, does drop for Palmer, some hit, well it might not mean anything but it's a fabulous strike. City have picked up three wins in a row in all competitions and now we can hear from the gaffer as his side looks to make it four. And they've had a disjointed start to their season so uh, a difficult one to predict. Um, I, I suspect they will strengthen their squad um, this week. I think they've signed one player. They've got some players to come back from injury so um, and they'll be looking to pick up their, their first win of the season um, and it'll be backed up by a performance but we can't focus on, on, on South End. Um, the players are prepped and ready. Hopefully they, they, they turn up on Saturday and put in another performance similar to what they've done recently. Um, and that's a really pl good platform to give them an opportunity for success. And of course, they got their first point of the season last weekend and they look strong at Crawley. Obviously, they're going to be chomping at the bit to get their first win, aren't they? Yeah, definitely. They had their, their best performance of the season by, by a long stretch last weekend at Crawley um, and could have got more out of the game. So, But like I say... We, we, we try and give the players an idea of what to expect when the, the, the game starts at the weekend. Um, but our focus is always on ourselves and our principles of play. Um, but most importantly, our mindset. If your mindset's right as a footballer, um, you give yourself a chance to perform. Um, and the team it needs to have a whole group of players um, pulling each other in the right direction. We've gone away from home, a long trip. Uh, we'll do a little bit of training on the way up tomorrow um, just to break up the journey. Um, but we need to hit Saturday afternoon hard um, and we've got to be in the right moments of the game, um, both ends of the pitch. Um, we saw how, how the, the goals changed the game on Tuesday um, and there was a lot of them. Um, we've got to make sure we're on the right end of those come the weekend. The votes have been cast and they have been counted and you, the Exeter City fans, have decided that our new signing, Lewis Page, is the player of the month for September. 
We caught up with him to find out how he feels about that and his thoughts ahead of the game at South End. It's obviously nice that the fans have um, seen me play, even though they're not in the stadium. Uh, they watch it from home and obviously likes my performances. Um, it could have been, I suppose, it could have been any any one of ones on the list, um, especially young lads that have done very well so far. So yeah, I'm, I'm happy I can take it. Does it make it extra special for you that it's, it's the fans that have, have voted? Yeah, I think so. Um, and obviously, if it was the players that voted as well, it'd be, it'd be good because they see you every day in training also. So, But yeah, it's nice for the fans that can and see it, especially because they're not here at the moment at the stadium. So it's nice that they're watching from the moment or we know that as well. And it's testament, I think, to, to you boys that play in, in the wing positions that you narrowly beat Josh Key to that vote as well. And, and the pair of you, you've been brilliant. <laughs> Yeah, he's done very well. Uh, Josh has probably been, I, I would say he's probably deserved it, but he's uh, he scored as well, didn't he? Um, but yeah, he's, he's he's a great athlete. Um, we've had a few like different battles and stuff in training. I, I, I've seen how, how good he is and stuff. So, um, And Joe Lowe in front of me, I said um, previously in another interview that I'm impressed with how, he, how he's done as well, especially off the ball. Um, I didn't have to really talk to him too much. Um that's impressed me. And then on the ball, obviously, his goal at the weekend showed how good he is. So we know about your injury problems at Charlton. How good does it feel for you to get through the first month of the season without any issues? Yeah, it's really nice. Um, I had a good bulk sort of pre-season. Um, even before pre-season, I had, um, obviously, it was like the lockdown process and whatever. So I had a good amount of time to get as fit as possible and, and do the gym work that I needed to do. Um, and I feel it's, it's paying benefit. Um, and then obviously I played I think it's four or five 90 minutes now in a row which is it's a really good feeling especially after the last couple of years it's nice also mentally to know that I've, I've done that now so that's about kicking on and, and, and long may it continue and on to Saturday South End it's, it's your neck of the woods near enough I mean it, it, yeah. you must be gutted that you, you, your family and things wouldn't be able to make it yeah it'd have been a nice one for them to, to come and watch um also, like the, the Orient and, and teams like that are pretty local. Um, but it is what it is. Um, they'll come down and, and down to Exeter eventually and hopefully they can get into the, into the games there as well. So those were Lewis's thoughts about what happens on the pitch. But what about off it? Here's getting to know you. So we'll start with, who is your footballing hero? Um, probably Ashley Cole or Gareth Bell. Um, I grew up uh, a Spurs fan. Um, then I turn, sort of turned into a West Ham fan after being there for so long. Uh, but I enjoyed watching Bale so, so many times over the years. Uh, he's an exciting player. And then Ashley Cole, obviously, is a left back. Uh, a world league one, very strong, like, very rarely got beat. Uh, and obviously, England, England um, left back every, every time they sort of play the game. So it's an easy watch for me and them too. What are your best memories in football, personally for you and as a fan as well? Um, as a fan, uh, as a fan, I remember going to the I think it was two thousand and six uh, FA Cup final, West Ham Liverpool, uh, and Liverpool ended up winning. Gerrard scored a banger. Um, I think it went to penalties and they lost. West Ham lost on that, but that was a that was a good game at Millennium Stadium. And then personally, as a player, uh, making my debut probably for West Ham, I'd say. Who is the best player you've played with? With. Uh, probably Dimitri Payet, I'd say. And the uh, same very, against, pardon? And the same question, but who the uh, best player you played uh, against? Um, uh, probably uh, we played Juventus in the pre season game, uh, and Dybala was very, very good, and probably Danny Alves. I was like really up against him for a little bit, and yeah, just you can see how, how good he is on the ball and stuff. Like it was um, also while I was playing, I was thinking like this this guy is just rolling the rolling his foot over the ball and just doing things that I hadn't really seen before from a fullback. So it was a a good experience that one. Am I right in thinking that Juventus game was the first in the new ground? Yeah, it was the opening uh, or like the reveal of the stadium. So it was a it was a good packed house and it was a good sort of like uh, stage and stuff for before the game and after the game and put on a bit of a show so it was, it was quite a good uh, spectacle How different is it to Upton Park? Uh, yeah it's, it is different Upton Park was a proper football stadium 
Um, the atmosphere was, I don't think I'd been anywhere else that's got a better atmosphere than that Upton Park did. Um, and it was like, I was lucky enough to play at a, uh, a full house um, on my debut. So it was, I experienced that and it's uh, something that I'll um, always keep hold of. Back onto some more personal questions. The first pair of boots you owned, do you remember? Uh, yeah, I think probably, I think they were Puma Kings. Uh, or black and white ones. Uh, used to buy Warden for a good couple of years. What was your first car? Uh, a Fiesta. A silver Fiesta. And what about now? Uh, I've got a Range Rover Evoque. Yeah, so I've moved up in the world a little bit. <laughs> so, obviously, after the game, the players get Domino's. What's your go-to pizza topping? Uh, pineapple. Just pineapple for me. Most people don't like it, but I, I, I enjoy it, so I don't care. <laughs> Any of the lads comment on that, do they? Uh, no, nah, because we don't, it's usually like a, they, they bulk order it, so yeah. it's, um, the pineapple's never in there, so I just have, I think it's the chicken and, chicken and something, but if I had to choose, I'd, I'd, I'd just have the pineapple. <laughs> I like it plain, just with a few chicken strips um, and some wings, that, that'll do me. Doesn't sound too shabby. Your uh, favourite ho- holiday destination? Uh, I'd have to say Dubai, probably. I've been there, like, I don't know, 10 or more times, so I'll probably say that. But first holiday, my girlfriend was in Mexico, and I really enjoyed that one. That was a good couple of weeks there. Um, just a different... I hadn't been there before, so it was a bit different to, obviously, going to Spain and things like that. And the final one, obviously, you've been in Exeter for a month or so now. Have you, you got to explore the city yet? And I mean, what's some of your favourite bits of the city? I have, yeah. I go Exeter every day off, pretty much, um, into the centre. Um, the best bit, I don't know, the Nando's. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, you got to be fair, the Zara, and that's good there. Uh, I've been in there a few times, bought a few bits, so I can got my own little wardrobe in the house at the minute. So, um, It'd be nice when the sort of uh, missus can come down and we can sort of settle in a bit more and have a little bit more of an in-depth look around. We went to Lloyd's Kitchen at the weekend, which was nice. So, yeah. I'm sure the fans watching this will have plenty of suggestions for you. (laughs) In in the summer when things are back to normal as well next summer, hopefully. Yeah, yeah, that's it. It's been five years since Southend United and Exeter last played. So uh, while we're up here with a viewpoint over the stadium, it's only right that our cup historian, Will Barrett, takes a look back at some historic contests. Our trip to Southend on sea this weekend will be the club's 33rd visit to Root Hall since the ground was opened in 1955 by former president of FIFA and former ECSC reserve goalkeeper, Sir Stanley Rouse. Historically, it has not been the happiest of away days for the Grecians, as we've only managed to pick up a total of five league wins at this stadium in that time. However, the historical head-to-head record is much better, with City winning 40, drawing 35 and losing 43 games against the Shrimpers in the league. Our last visit to Roots Hall came back in October 2014, where Graham Cummings equalised in the 77th minute to pick up a point for the Grecians in a one-all draw. One of our own and one of our goal scorers from our recent game against Cambridge, Matt Jay, was an unused sub on that day. But we'll all be hoping that he'll be out on the park this weekend to continue his good runner form and help the lads to put a positive tick in the win column. Just look at this carpet. Our head groundsman Chaz has done a brilliant job keeping the pitch in tip-top shape so far this season. We caught up with him this week to talk about just how he keeps it looking so brilliant. Uh, well, I'll just quickly go over the uh, start of, of on Saturday when I told you it, was, uh, it wasn't going to rain and I was going to do my white lining and then literally I got halfway down one side and it started lashing down with rain. So I oh, don't take my weather predictions seriously because they're wrong. Uh, but yeah, we, um, it was wet after the game. Uh, so we didn't do a clean up on, on Saturday evening. Uh, we did it yesterday, which went really well, although it was still quite wet. Um, got two weeks today before the next game, evening game. Um, uh, so we're taking the opportunity to put some holes in to keep the drains open, uh, get the water going through um, using a Virtue Drain machine, uh, a deep tine aeration machine. Uh, fairly slow job, going to take me most of today to get the pitch done um, and then see what goes. We've got a dryish day today, so it's a good day for it. Um, not much fun sitting on here in the rain. 
Um, but yeah, so yeah, pretty pleased. Um, gonna get another cut on it, um, maybe later on today, just to tidy up a bit more and uh, and then go into next week, see what we come up with next week. So does this machine help push water through that's already in, or does it just create? Uh, no, what it does, it, it puts holes, solid holes in, leaves a hole, um, so you've got air, and also you've got uh, um, a direct route into the drainage system. Um, so it's, it's helping the rooting of the plant. Uh, it keeps the surface drier. Obviously, if we can keep it drier, not during the games. When it comes to the game, it's not so wet during the game. So um, it's all about getting air into the soil, relieving any compaction that there is, um, which will stop the grass growing well and obviously hold moisture up. Um, uh, it's just basically about getting air and water through the soil um, so the plant can, can grow uh, healthily. Um, and how often do you have to do this kind of treatment? Well, this time of year we'll, we'll do it as often as we can reasonably, um, probably once every couple of weeks, every two or three weeks. Um, but once it starts to get wet and the grass stops growing, then we, we, we have to reduce it probably once every six weeks if we're lucky. Um, and then get through the winter months and then back into the spring where we can increase the frequency again. Surely, as a groundsman, these kind of jobs are the most fun, aren't they? Dri you know, driving around them. Yeah, the yeah, this one's a bit slow for me. Uh, I come up with loads of harebrained ideas if I'm sat on here all day. Um, so, uh, yeah, that'll be uh, my work colleagues have to put up with that tomorrow morning when I come in with all sorts of ideas. But yeah, yeah, no, it's good. This is the time when the pitch comes first. As I say, there's no football on it for two weeks, which we're really lucky that, you know, in the stadium, that's what happens. A bit different at the Cat and Fiddle where it's used every day. Um, but yeah, we try and get this looking the best we possibly can and playing the best we possibly can so we can have results like we took on took on Saturday, which we'll take every day of the week, I just think. Does your approach change a little bit this time of year? Obviously, because, you know, the conditions, more rain is always expected, isn't it? You know, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, we just say we do this this sort of operation when conditions allow us to, you know. And um, if if it's hammering down with rain and blowing a gale, then the best thing we can do is get in and do a bit of maintenance on the machinery and and do get some other jobs done, which we can't do at this now because we're busy on the grass. Okay. Thank you very much. I'll let you get back to it now because yep. it will take you two days. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Ben Seymour scored his first goal for City on Tuesday night at Swindon, and here are some more of our number nines football firsts. Can you remember your first pair of football boots you had? I think I'm exposing myself here, but I think I had the copers, the old leather copers. And to make things even worse, I think I wrapped the laces around the bottom because they were so, oh, it's just a horrible look. I don't even want to think about it, Scott. Horrible. How did you get on in them, though? Yeah, I, I, scored, I scored a lot of goals in them in the 18s, uh, and I think it was 60s as well. But yeah, no. <laughs> looking back, I think, uh, I think I've moved on from them boots. <laughs> um, what's the first football match that you remember growing up? What, what going to watch or play? Uh, I mean, either. I mean, what's, the first, what's your first sort of like memory of football, would you say? Um, my first memory of football is probably because my my uncle used to be a pro at Yeovil and uh, we used to go down there and watch him watch him quite a lot and obviously he was a striker as well um, so yeah I used to go down to uh, I can't remember what Yeovil's grounds called but it was, a, it, was it had a good good atmosphere and it was yeah that was probably my first memory um, what was the first match that you watched live I'd assume it was one of those games was it yeah it was either it was either one of them games or um, one uh, image out of in my head is I went to watch Arsenal in the, I think it was a competition in pre-season they used to play in and they were playing a big team. I think it was AC Milan and I remember walking into the stadium and it was the first big stadium that I've been to thinking, wow, this is just, this is just mental. The, the amount of people that were there and just the atmosphere it was just, yeah, and it's really stuck with me. Was that sort of when you really knew that, you know, football was for you? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I've, I've, I've been brought up through a footballing background and uh, play, played since I don't know since the age of three, but yeah, I mean going to the Emirates and seeing Arsenal play, who were originally my team, um, yeah, it was it was an unbelievable memory. Do you remember the first goal you scored as a kid? I I, I remember because I moved down from London when I was younger, and then probably and I signed for a team called Credit and Saints, and we had some great players. I mean. I think four or five of them ended up in the academy and uh, we were, I think the first game and 
we kind of just bossed the lead. I think we won one game 15 nil, and I think I scored seven. It was just it was just mental. But yeah, probably probably playing for credit in Saints. Was that the most goals you've ever scored in a game as well? Seven. <laughs> but, yeah, but back then when you were younger and it's smaller, <laughs> smaller pitches, you can get away with it. Um, who was your first football hero growing up? Um, well, I started I, when I first started playing football. I was actually a centre midfielder, so and Arsenal were my team. So, looking back, it was probably Cesc Fabregas. I used to, um, yeah, I used to watch him and just buzz off him. Really, he used to be so technically good in the Arsenal's midfield, um, and obviously he came into the squad as a youngster through Arsenal, and then he kind of just established himself through there. Um, your first football kit you had would it have been an Arsenal one. I think it was, yeah. I think it was an Arsenal one with the old Fabregas on the back. Uh, the first car that you bought? First car. The car subject is quite a, it's a bit of a <laughs> st- situation with me because uh, I bought, I've had, I've had three cars so far. I'm written off two, so it's not been, not been a good road for myself. But that, I think I'm over it now. I'm a little bit older, but my first car was a CIB for. And it was it was a good little good little car. I, I liked it a lot. But I think I got the Seat Curse. What's that? Oh, that was my last car before I got a new. Yeah, no, they're good, aren't they? Definitely. Um, first day in the dressing room, the first team dressing room. What was that like? Uh, what moving up to be yeah, a pro? Up from, yeah, um, yeah. It was. I think I think we were in. We, we, I wasn't actually in because when you're you're a younger one, you go into like a different change into what the first team boys are, but. Um, I remember a memory, I think it was, um, we used to sit down for dinner and I remember Dan Green, who used to be our coach, used to, um, for the 18s, used to say to us about going to mingle with the first team boys. I remember sitting down and just trying try to make conversation, it's just, just a small talk and you just, you just don't want to be doing it, but it did get me through the day and obviously it made me feel more comfortable within the environment. Um, and your first professional appearance, what was that feeling like? My first professional appearance was, I th- my first league home appearance was the Leighton Orient when I came on and won the pen. So obviously that was a, that was a, that's a good memory in my mind. But um, but yeah, nah. So yeah, let's just go with Leighton Orient. Yeah, no, it sticks well with me. Obviously coming on and winning that pen with, I think were we two one down? Yeah, there was only about five minutes to go. I think yeah, about. and then I had the opportunity to score right at the end where I put the volley over the bar. But nah, that's yeah, letting all in was one. Uh, finally, uh, do you remember your first celebration that you had? How did you used to celebrate goals? I think in the 18s, it wasn't really a, uh, it, it wasn't really for celebrating. If in the, in the league games you didn't really celebrate, it was just a, just a fist pump. But I think the games that we really looked forward to was the FA Youth Cup games. Mm. I think we played Oxford when I was first year scholar, and we beat them two 0 I think, and uh, I remember my, and I scored the first goal, and I just remember that it, it was the closest that I was going to get to a first team game. I just remember knee knee sliding off just in the moment, loving it. But now, nah, yeah, probably Oxford. Brilliant. Thanks, Ben. Top man. Thank you. St James's Park may have been quiet with fans. But throughout the summer, we've had plenty of young people around the ground taking part in the NCS project. Here is Danny Harris to talk all about it. So the NCS programme is a programme for 15 to 17 year olds. We're currently working in partnership with Exeter College to deliver the programme. Really exciting to be delivering face to face. You know, we're following government guidance, we're following college guidance. But it's just a great opportunity at the moment for us to deliver the programme, which is so powerful to young people. The programme itself consists of three phases. We have a um, adventure phase, where they get to kind of meet new people, do some activities. So we've been water-based activities, some climbing, mountain biking. Then we flip into the transition to adulthood. So supporting skills, you know, valuable skills that are gonna be really benefit young people going forward. Uh, And then we look at social action, which is engaging local communities, delivering projects, fundraising, raising awareness of charities, but also the skills that the young people learn as they go through and the confidence that they build and the resilience, you know, that that they strengthen is, is, is brilliant to see. We've all been sort of locked up, you know, for the last few months, haven't we? Is it, is it great for these young people to be out active, meeting new people and, you know, life going to as normal as it can be, really? Yeah, definitely. And, that, you know, it, we, we've all struggled, you know, um, with various Zoom calls and not delivering face to face. But the fact that we can get young people together now in a safe environment has been really key for us. And it's been key for that young, the young people that have been challenged, you know, and we're having discussions with young people that have 
you know, do suffer with mental health and, and well-being. And, you know, it's really important that we tackle those issues. And, and we do that in a way which is really safe and structured and, and gives young people an opportunity to really kind of be the best version of themselves. And um, so what, what kind of things have they been, you know, doing? I mean, I remember last year there was the project around um, Sainsbury's and That's just right, going yeah. to the food bank and making it really obvious what they need. I mean, what yeah. Kind of stuff they've been up to? Yeah, so it's, it's about looking at uh, what's needed within the community. Um, you know, it might be raising awareness. It might be, as you say, you know, delivering a project that has a national uh, impact as the Sainsbury's Food Bank project did last year. Um, but it's, it's, I suppose we've had um, tackling homelessness, tackling loneliness, um, looking at well-being of our community at the moment, where the gaps are and how we can kind of support that and, and whether that is raising money, whether that is you know, making up boxes for homeless people, um, it, a wide variety. I mean, I think we've just totaled up, we've raised around £10,000 over the last five weeks of through social action for local communities, for local charities, which is brilliant. And when the young people see the difference that they're making, hopefully it empowers them for you know, future volunteering and, and social impact. I mean, and personally, and, and for CCT, it must be, you must take a great sense of pride from the kind of things they get up to and just seeing them kind of blossom over the few weeks. Yeah, it's amazing. And, you know, City Community Trust, the football club, you know, the partnerships that we have within the city, it's really important to us. And for us to be able to do this is, you know, makes our jobs worthwhile and, and the impact that we're having and the opportunities that we're giving all generations, you know, from three year olds to 90 year olds is, is hugely beneficial. And, you know, we're really proud of what we deliver and, and how we deliver it. And uh, just finally, you know, it's a bit too late for this year, but same, it will happen again next year. I mean, how do people register their interest if they're watching and hit the right age graphic? Yeah, so they can go to um, City Community Trust website. All the details are on there on how you can sign up. We've uh, got a program starting in October half term. Um, still have places available so if anybody's interested and you know wants to improve their CV and meet new people and build confidence and resilience, then p please have a look and come and join us. As ever, we love to get the fans involved in park life so this week we caught up with Jamie Dyer as he discusses the South End game and the season so far. First off Jamie how are you doing? Yeah yeah I'm, I'm all right thank you yeah yeah. Good times how are you finding it not being at St James Park at the moment? Um I must admit it's very very strange um because every time I get up in the morning um I do remember that it's football but of course I'm usually getting ready uh, and stuff like that, but it just feels weird. Absolutely. Uh, so. Have you been tuning in on iFollow and watching the game? Yes, yeah. Yeah, um, it's nice to um, have it back, but it's a shame that we obviously can't be there, but it is what it is. Not, not quite the same as being there in person, though, is it? Not not quite the same as being there in person, though, is no, it? No, no. Um, so, what, I mean, what have you made of it so far? We've put, you know, three, four games into the season on the back um, of the win. Yeah, um, I've been really uh, impressed with the youngsters, uh, uh, Joel Randall um, and Josh Key. Um, I think they've been really um, influential uh, at times. Um, um, and I've also been impressed with. Uh, Lewis Page, so yeah, a long may it continue, and it's been a decent start to the season as well. So uh, I can't complain. Excellent. I mean, we faced South End on Saturday, um, a team you know new to this division. We haven't played them in about five years. Um, they had a tricky start to the season, but obviously picked up a pretty good point at Crawley last week. I mean, do you, do you know much about them or what you're expecting from them? Um, if, well, as far as I know, because um, of course with their uh, unfortunate uh, financial difficulties, of which I hope they head out of fairly soon, uh, but it's a largely um, inexperienced uh, squad, um, as far as I know. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how they patch up. Um, but, uh, but I... No, um, of course, they're two main sh strikers up top. Uh, 
hand and the chip um, whom um, who their new manager uh, um, Osley uh, knows from his time at Weymouth so of course it should be um, a good test for them but it could also be a potential banana skin for us so absolutely I mean um you know, it'd be good on the back of two two wins in the league now as well. It'd be good to make that free, wouldn't it, and keep pushing up the table. Yes, yeah, um, yeah. But of course, there is uh, always room for um, improvement. But but like I say, um, um, I've been largely impressed, and uh, hopefully, we can make it uh, three wins in three. Awesome. I'm going to have to ask you what you reckon the score will be as well. Um, probably given that it's a large, um, sort of inexperienced squad, I would hope that we would uh, put them to the sword. But again, that's not quite how a supporting Exeter works. So I'm probably going to go uh, three one um, Exeter. So good, wouldn't it? I mean, also, I think, have I seen that you've been doing a lot of writing recently as well about Exeter? Have you got a book? Yes, on? yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, because I've uh, wrote for uh, various um, other people sort of about Exeter and Eek too, so I thought I would uh, try my own hand at it, and it seems to be going fairly well, and Excellent. I mean, how do people check that out as well if they're interested? You're on Twitter as well. Yeah, yeah their uh, impressions have been good so far. Um, and uh, I'm just looking forward to seeing uh, where it takes me and how far I can go, really. And... Awesome. Well, hopefully um, we'll all be back at St James Park before before too long as well, because I know, you know, a lot of people miss it. Will you miss it? We for us it, we miss seeing people there it's a little strange you know when we're, there's just a few of yes. us on the ground so hopefully that's sooner rather than later yeah definitely um it'll be nice to be back and i'm sure it'll be special of when we do get back exactly um enjoy the game on on i follow jamie hopefully yeah, hopefully the free one happens and uh thanks for your input on the game no thank you Thank you for joining us on this week's episode of Park Life on the Road, which is exactly where I'm going now, on the road to South End. Thank you so much to Vospers here in Exeter for lending us this Ford Puma. It's an excellent ride, brand new, and I think I'll enjoy the trip to South End.